So is your fridge or freezer making that type of noise? Almost uh, sounds like a propeller type noise. It is quite annoying. And there are many different ways on why it's doing that and actually how to just fix it. So don't worry. If you're hearing a sort of helicopter noise, you can probably fix it yourself. And it's probably just something very simple. In my case, it's kind of simple, but then it's also doing it sometimes when it's not so simple. I'll, I'll show you. So the first reason why your freezer or fridge, but usually it's a freezer in these types of setup that's making the noise. And the reason for that is usually because of overstuffing. But my freezer is kind of overstuffed. And what's happening, the back panel, the back plate, the plastic is hitting the fan. Now, for me to stop that noise from happening, I'll just have to take out a few things and as you hear, the noise subsided. Noise is gone. And most of the time, that's exactly why. It's just completely overstuffed. Now basically all I will do is take this stuff out because it will relieve the pressure on the back panel. And I will show you. And there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm sure can go. But I'm just going to show you. So the back panel is right there. That is where the cool air is coming out of. And just to show that it was the back panel, I can just go and see. So if you have anything that is pushing on that panel, any type of food, the fan right there is going to start hitting that plastic. And also there are different ways why your fridge or freezer might be making that helicopter noise. So basically if your helicopter noise was because of overstuffing, well, now you know, easy fix. Now a lot of the times it's not because of overstuffing, it's because of ice buildup in the back panel where the fan is. So if there's ice buildup back there and the fan is constantly hitting pieces of ice, it will make that same noise, that helicopter noise. And a lot of the times, it was not because of overstuffing this freezer. What I've done in the past, I've taken everything out as I will do right now. And remember, if you take anything, if you take this stuff out of the freezer, obviously it's better to put it in another freezer if you have it or a fridge at least, or if it's winter, you can just put it outside, but summer is getting close and I can't really put this stuff outside right now. I mean, there's a lot of junk in this freezer. So we'll just take everything out of the freezer real quick just to assess if there is any other type of damage or what you should do if you still hear that helicopter noise after the freezer is empty. All right, so now that everything is out of the freezer, I've unplugged it, so now it's safe to see what the problem is. Now the thing is with overstuffing, it can make the freezer not run well and accumulate a lot of ice. And how this would happen is, as you can see at the bottom right there, there is a vent. Now that vent will suck up air and it will push out cold air from that vent where the fan is. Now, if the fan, as I said, has ice buildup around it, then it will not work properly. Now you have a couple of options here because if your freezer is still making that helicopter noise after you've taken the stuff out, so it wasn't overstuffing, it is ice buildup behind that panel where the fan is, you can either take the panel off, take a look, and just leave the fridge and freezer unplugged for 24 hours and just let it melt naturally. Now, if that happens, there will be water buildup at the bottom here of the freezer and also there is a drain pan somewhere underneath it and the water will accumulate in there and it will overflow a bit and it will go on the floor. Now, if that happens, just make sure to have towels on the floor to be able to collect all that water and to not damage your floor, especially if you have laminate floors or even hardwood floors, hardwood floors, the water would have to sit on it for quite a while for it to actually damage something. But laminate floors doesn't have to sit very long for the, the water to seep in between the pieces of laminate floors. Now, I have ceramic tiles, so if you have ceramic tiles, you don't really have to worry about anything. And even cushion floor, you shouldn't have to worry unless the water goes 
behind where the cushion floor starts meets the wall and can go underneath it and can obviously damage the floor. But if that's not the case, then you shouldn't have anything to worry about. But either way, even if you have ceramic floors, throw in some towels, put it there, let it thaw out, and then plug it again the next day. And I am almost 95% sure that that will be the end of that helicopter noise. Now, I'm gonna take the plate off because I never have, and I kinda wanna see if there's a lot of ice buildup because when I took the stuff out, yes, the helicopter noise did stop, but in the past, it didn't stop. I had to, well, as you can see, silly me took a, a, a knife and tried to just pull this part away from the fan, but that was not the, that was not the problem. It was mostly ice build up where the fan was. So anyway, that's just me trying to, to cut corners, but don't try that. Don't stick anything in that vent. That's, that's not very bright. You know, stuff like this happens if you do stuff like that, just saying. So now I'm gonna take, usually it's a screwdriver, usually it's just screws. And one thing, always use a screwdriver. Don't use any power tools to unscrew and screw the back of this because it's all plastic. If you use a power tool and you, you know, you can take it out with a power tool, but when you stick it back in, you can just make it a little bit too tight, crack the back panel plastic and your fridge and freezer will completely be destroyed. All right, so I'm taking the back panel off. And as I said, there are two options for you to use. Now, I'm going to take the back panel, as I said, and look what the ice buildup is. But if you don't want to take the back panel off, that's perfectly fine. You can let it thaw. But also, if you don't really want to let it thaw, if you don't have anywhere to put your food for 24 hours, then you can use a hair dryer. Now, all you need to do is take a hair dryer. I don't have one. Um, I have instead a steamer, which essentially does the same thing. You just want to apply heat behind where the vent is. However, just make sure that you, if you do use something like a hair dryer, you don't stay at the same spot the whole time. Always use a moving motion from side to side because usually a lot of these, the, the back plate, the plastic is very thin and it's easy to warp and melt. And if you warp it, it might warp backwards a bit and then hit the fan and then you're kind of screwed. But as I said, if you just take the back panel off, you can just see it for yourself. And also if you have, let's say even something like a heat gun, don't use something like that because that's just way too much heat. So hair dryer or steamer. I'll use my steamer if there's a lot of ice buildup, but we will see. Now, here it is. Now that's not really too bad. Usually, a lot of the times when that coil is completely built up of ice, then the ice will creep up and will affect your fan. And in my case, it's actually not so, so bad. The coil has some ice on it and the fan seems fine. I can touch the fan, I can turn the fan, and there's absolutely no ice buildup up there, which is perfect. A lot of them, it's just one unit where you have all these, this coil, and the fan is literally right on top of it. So if there's ice buildup on the coils, then it just goes up a bit, and it doesn't take much to just touch that fan and to start making that annoying noise. Now what you can do if you just have minimal ice buildup like this, you can use a hair dryer and just quickly remove the ice or a steamer if you have one. But as you see here, there's not that much ice, so there won't be much to take out. As I said, just use it as a, make a, always be moving it. Now, just to not melt any of the plastic and, you know, destroy your freezer and also there are some wires that can easily get damaged with heat so now that the ice is gone hopefully if you opened it up and there was a big chunk of ice you can get rid of that and 95 percent of the time it's either overstuffing or ice buildup the other five percent it's just there's something wrong with the freezer it's not working correctly and you might have to get it repaired but that's very small percentage most of the time 
It's something that you can easily fix at home yourself in less than an hour. I'm just gonna put my plate back on and clean my freezer and hopefully not overstuff it again. Feel free to take a look at many of our other YouTube videos and also some of our articles on our website, soundproofguide.com. Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed this video and also consider subscribing to our channel if you like our content. Also feel free to leave us a comment below if you have any soundproofing questions of your own. We will certainly try our very best to help you.